Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel. That is Adu Mandla. So guys, uh, as you know that uh, we are covering uh, your subject of political theory, and under it we have started your concept of rights topic. And under concept of rights, we are uh, we have covered different theories on rights. So we have covered liberal theory, natural theory, and your uh, legal theory, historical theory, moral theory. so all those theories of rights we have uh, already covered and uh, in this lecture we will be covering your uh, uh, theory of rights uh, that was given by harold j lesky so he was a thinker political thinker and he was he was a liberal thinker and uh, he, he he his work is considered the most authoritative uh, in fact in in uh, in in, uh, in 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 the field of rights if we consider so uh, if anybody is interested in understanding what the rights are and what do you uh, what what does it mean by the rights then it is important that uh, uh, he or she must also uh, know about uh, lasky's view on uh, on rights so let's start our discussion without wasting much time and uh, with his one quote that is without equality i say there cannot be liberty so let's start a discussion so guys uh, there is a perspective called social democratic perspective so what this perspective is it is basically seeing rights not just from the perspective of individual liberty but also from the perspective of social justice and and that with that too within within the democratic structure so uh, uh, in a sense it is basically looking at the rights from the angle an angle of individual liberty plus social justice and that within the framework overall framework of democratic structure so this perspective uh, is best represented by lasky's theory of rights so until now we have read various theories and uh, all those theories have uh, in one way or the other focused upon the rights of the individual and uh, rarely we have found uh, any theory which has talked about social justice so that social justice is important part of uh, if uh, of the of the concept of rights as per harold j lasky so that's why he he see uh, he he considers the right from this perspective that is social democratic perspective so his theory is a theory is basically the synthesis of liberal and socialist values so liberal liberal values you must be knowing that uh, liberal values basically focus on individual liberty that is right to life liberty and property and socialist values basically subscribe to the rights such as uh, social equality or economic equality or social justice so over the course of his work uh, he has developed uh, a theory of the service state so when when he has considered uh, this entire concept of rights he he considered it from liberal as well as socialist perspective and in co in the course of his work he has developed a theory of service state so he has not just focused upon individual liberty but also has paid a keen attention to the to the concept uh, to the to the to the to the concept of uh, social and economic rights apart from the individual rights uh, of of civil uh, of uh, or like like political rights uh, of the individual like freedom to speech of, uh, and uh, freedom to speech and expression right to criticize and right to vote so he has not just focused on these rights but also on social and economic rights so uh, his view is the synthesis of liberal and socialist values as i have already explained so he in fact is a true liberal thinker so it is his liberty uh, it is it it is his love for liberty in fact which inspires him to take the uh, to take up the cause of social and economic equality because he says that okay if if uh, you if we give an individual the right to freedom of speech and expression or we give him the right to vote or right to criticize then if we don't consider his uh, uh, social or economic rights then it doesn't make uh, uh, much difference because uh, if for example if in a society 
देर इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वेल्थ इन अ मैनर दैट आई दो आई एम आई एम गिवन सम पोलिटिकल राइट्स बट आई डोंट हैव एनी सोशल वैल्यू और इकनॉमिक वैल्यू आई हैव लिटल सिग्निफिकेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ सोशल इक्वालिटी और इकनॉमिक इक्वालिटी दैन आई कैन बी ईजिली सेटिसफाइड और दे कैन ईजिली एक्सप्रेस मी सो इन इन दैट कॉन्टेक्सट ही सेज दैट इन 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 दैट सेंस दैन पोलिटिकल लिबर्टी विल बी नथिंग सो ही ही Uh, uh, in, in that sense, we we uh, refer to him as true liberal because he has understood liberty in a sense uh, that nobody has understood. So uh, he he in fact uh, his uh, it it is his love for liberty that's why he has taken up uh, taken up the cause of uh, social and economic equality because he knows that how important it is to have social and economic equality apart from political equality when 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 it comes to raising a voice in the society or to make a difference in the society. so his one quote is uh, a state divided into a small number of rich and a large number of poor will always develop a government manipulated by the rich to protect the amenities represented by their property so this one quote is uh, uh, quite impressive so you might have understood what he wants to say and what i wants to explain to you through through his his views so he says that if there is concentration of wealth then of course there will be manipulation and rich will rich will have that power to manipulate the government so uh, so as to protect their amenities uh, and and uh, and their property and that will be to the disadvantage of the of the millions or very very large section of society which is not rich or which is poor so <clears throat> this is basically uh, a synthesis of uh, uh, liberal and socialist values so uh, and and as i have to, uh, told you that he is he is an ardent champion of social justice but that doesn't mean that he subscribes to the socialist model of russia because he says that russia in russia the uh, the individual freedom is suppressed the right to freedom of speech and expression is suppressed the civil rights are are not recognized they are in fact severely crushed so that's why he doesn't subscribe to socialist model but then again he also does not subscribe to the capitalist model model he attacks it for its uh, for its uh, for its um, uh, ignorance of social and economic rights and he attacks it for its exploitative nature so he says that uh, giving me a uh, right to freedom of speech and expression uh, holds little meaning when i have little social and economic significance as i've told you earlier so he says that if if there is a democratic structure then it is possible within that democratic structure to bring in the synthesis of liberal as well as socialist values because liberal values have their own significance and socialist values have their own significance and they each have uh, have have their own significance and contribution to make to the concept of liberty so that is best possible within a democratic structure so uh, he held that it is neither uh, it is uh, that uh, liberty is neither perfectly secure in 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 a in a in a capitalist system capitalist model like america or socialist model like russia so uh, he says that it is the rigidness of the two systems uh, uh, or that 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 which is responsible for stressing one or the other other dimension of the liberty <laughs> Uh, because he says that russia stresses uh, the 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 political aspect of the liberty but then uh, uh, capitalist system as, as, as stresses the economic and social aspect so uh, both of these models cannot be held uh, uh, held to be conducive uh, to the concept of liberty so in that sense we can say that uh, it can be said that he can und he understands the concept of liberty in its most comprehensive sense in the sense that he has considered all its dimensions uh, which are possible that is social economic political and then cultural also so <clears throat> he further says that if any threat comes to the liberty it is from the privileged classes 
uh and and this 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 concept this fact he says that this fact is true in is true in 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 all the systems uh, that we have seen in the past as well so uh, always there uh, if there is any opposition that comes to the equalization of privileges it comes from those classes who are benefiting from the existing system and who are who are at the top of top strata of the society and are benefiting from unequal privileges uh, that are available to them and are not available to to a substantial section of society so they always oppose any equalization of privilege so this is true in uh, in case of all the systems that have existed in past so he uh, though re he recognizes that the liberal system the liberal model has certainly is certainly a step ahead in terms of evolution of human society uh, in in political sense in in terms of uh, uh, political in setting up political institutions certainly liberal model is a way forward not not way forward it is a step ahead but then again it 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 is not perfect uh, because it merely it merely replaces one uh, privileged class with with another that is the landed class of feudalism uh, has been replaced by by the by the capitalist class uh, by the by the capitalist class or class of uh, industrialism or 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 industrial class of capitalism so uh, uh, in this sense he says that uh, a liberal model uh, has the defect so then he uh, further uh, talks about the contrast that is uh, there between the haves and have nots in the capitalist system he says that uh, uh, when it comes to the needs and wants then uh, then uh, uh, if we consider the men and women who have access to all their needs and wants uh, uh, and then uh, those men and women who do not have uh, uh, access to even the basic minimum needed amenities then of course uh, 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 hardly those privileged sections know what it means to uh, to not have access to even those basic necessities so in this context he says that 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 much contrast which exists in a liberal model it it is true uh, it is truly uh, uh, unequal and it is truly intolerable which cannot be tolerated so in that context he holds that the liberal viewpoint that uh, that state should not interfere it is is not correct he 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 then evolves the concept of uh, service state he says that it is important for the state to intervene for 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 eliminating any injustice in any uh, form if it is prevailing in any society Uh, particularly if that is a liberal society so in this service state he talks about uh, the focus uh, should be not just upon individual liberty but also upon the welfare of the society as a whole uh, by focusing upon the social and economic aspects of the liberty as well so uh, he then lays the moral foundations of rights so if you have uh, heard uh, if you have uh, if you have listened to uh, my my lecture of uh, moral theory of rights then moral theory of right bas basically he postulates that uh, uh, the that uh, these rights emanate from the ability of the human beings to think uh, and uh, to think what is to uh, to think and to distinguish between what is right and wrong so in that context rights are developed by the human consciousness or human ability to think so lasky says uh, uh, lasky again then uh, also raises his theory uh, of rights on moral foundations so he says that they are the result of the reasoning capability of human being and the, the the rights are not the concessions of the state they are not granted by the state they are the they are the result of the human consciousness human uh, human ability to to reason out uh, the wrong and the right so in fact in that sense he says that rights are superior to the state and uh, and it is the it is the state that is meant for rights and not the rights that are meant for state so so it is uh, of course then um, uh, he says that rights are prior to the uh, state in that sense and uh, and they provide the very basis for the state and uh, uh, the existence of state uh, owes its uh, the state owes its existence to 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 the state uh, to uh, the state owes it, its existence to the rights in that sense so uh, also he says that that the nature of state can be just in in that context uh, 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 
uh, whether whether it holds those rights or not depending upon that we can judge uh, the state uh, and also then he also talks about rights as the, as the conditions uh, which which enable oneself to be at the best of one's personality so uh, he says that uh, thus the rights are prior to state and the state drives its validity from rights and uh, and it is not the rights that need recognition of uh, uh, state but rather state that uh, drives its validity its legitimacy its authority from the from the from the from the uh, from the uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the rights concept of rights so he then uh, moral uh, as he uh, 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 postulate the moral basis of rights uh, on those moral basis he talks about the equal treatment of all citizens in the matter of their rights so so he uh, uh, he postulates that uh, the state must treat everybody equally and that must not be in one sense but in the in the multiple uh, multiple ways in multiple dimensions so he then talks about the utility of the right he holds that the right has the utility uh, uh, not for one individual uh, it has the utility uh, and value for all the members of the society so that is basically that is why we say that he uh, he he builds his theory on moral basis <clears throat> so he postulates equal treatment and uh, utility of the right uh, to each member of the society and not for the just few people and uh, he then says that uh, that that when the state is uh, constituted if the state is given the sovereign power then that sovereign power the state must exercise in a sense that the benefit uh, that uh, that may arise from exercising such power must accrue to each one in each one of the individual that is there in a particular society and that is uh, uh, who is subject to the authority of the uh, of the of that sovereign power so he says that uh, that the power must be exercised in a way that it benefits the all uh, though over uh, benefits the all uh, 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 all those on uh, on whom this power uh, uh, is being exercised so any attempt he says that uh, if any attempt is being made uh, to eliminate any group from from the benefit of uh, of 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 of, uh, of uh, exercise of power then it is it is an attempt to perpetuate injustice uh, we uh, he says that it cannot be uh, it cannot stand to stand, stand scrutiny to the human reason so so <clears throat> in that sense he he says that it does not appeal to reason if anybody or any group of people are being excluded from uh, from certain set of rights or certain privileges and only a few sections are given those rights or privileges so uh, everybody must be equal in the exercise of sovereign power so here you can you can uh, uh, then deduce multiple rights from here that is equality before law or equal protection of law and all those things uh, but uh, we are limiting our discussion to rights as of now um, in a in a limited sense so none of such attempts he says that uh, if 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 any attempts are, is being made to eliminate some sections none of such attempt uh, uh, stands scrutiny by a thinker who is not uh, who is not inclined to think in a way uh, uh, that is prejudicial or uh, that 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 shows some emotional prejudice against uh, against some groups so <clears throat> then he uh, delves into the concept of individual and public liberty uh, public welfare sorry so he says that individual uh, and public welfare are inextricably linked so he says that the individual has some rights okay those rights uh, are then inextricably linked with the public welfare so uh, that means that we cannot say that uh, uh, the, the the individual rights are at conflict with the public welfare so uh, because he says that the welfare of the community uh, depends ultimately upon the welfare of the each of its individual so of course if there is a welfare of the each of individual then only the public welfare will take place community welfare will take place so in that sense he says that individual and public welfare are inextricably linked but then he says that if for example i am having any right which is enabling me to to be at best of my personality but but i am exercising that right in a manner that it restricts the ability of some other individual to be at the best of his his potential then of course 
my exercising of such right uh, will be will be against the public welfare in fact my right will then uh, will my my uh, existence of that very right uh, to that much extent that it interferes with the rights of the others it it will will not be favorable uh, to the concept of public welfare so he says that uh, that there must be a balance so such a right will then affect the public welfare uh, to which ultimately my welfare is linked uh, because ultimately public welfare will come with my welfare so if if anybody or i uh, i am able to uh, limit the or inhibit the rights of others then public uh, of course i will i i will be affected in one or the other way so in a sense he says that individual may have the rights against the state but not against the community so he says that okay we can demand our rights against the state but we cannot say that we uh, we uh, we must have rights against the community uh, we uh, we must have rights against the community so he says that individual must learn to subordinate his, his interest to the to the common welfare to the public welfare to the common good so he says that community represents the common good and uh, uh, the individual cannot have right rights against the common good so uh, authority of the state again uh, he he erects the th uh, state on on moral basis as uh, as he has built his theory of rights on moral basis so he talks about the moral authority of a state he he says that the moral authority uh, basically the state derives is basically from the recognition of claims of the individuals uh, or the citizens over which it exercises its authority so that's why only he says that state can exercise authority uh, over the over the over its subjects if it recognizes the the rights or claims of uh, of its uh, citizens if the state is not willing to recognize my claims or my rights or my interests then of course it loses that moral legitimacy to uh, to claim uh, claim my allegiance to to the state so in that sense he says that to deny such claims of the individual is to sacrifice the claim to their allegiance so uh, state can then exercise moral authority upon its citizens only on uh, uh, one basis that is by recognizing their rights so he he in effect thus uh, gives moral basis to the authority so the rights in a sense uh, uh, in this sense he says that are the creatures of are not the creatures of the law but the ideal objects of the law so so the law that that is being created must must seek to uh, to 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 uh, to uh, to achieve those rights and uh, and we cannot say that the law uh, that the rights emanate from the law for the law uh -huh. so in fact uh, uh, in in that sense uh, the 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 rights are the condition precedent to the law so they come before the law and uh, not uh, not with the law so uh, now now he talks about rights and duties here uh, you must remember the uh, the previous slides about uh, the individual and the public welfare that i have talked about he says that the system of rights if it is erected on moral basis it essentially it must essentially accompany with them the duties so he says that if i am claiming rights then i must also have duties because moral basis uh, um, of of rights uh, uh, also talks about duties if for example i am saying that i have i have only the rights and i have no responsibility or no duty towards the society in which i am living then certainly it is not sustainable so he says that rights and duties are inextricably linked if for example society is recognizing my right to my right to 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 uh, uh, to to uh, to provide me some certain conditions uh, that will help me in achieving my best then of course uh, uh, the society is is uh, in in a way also obligating me to recognize uh, uh, the, the the rights of the others uh, when it comes to development of their personality so uh, um, uh, when i exercise my rights i am also uh, i am also being um, uh, obligated to observe some uh, some uh, observe the rights of the others <clears throat> so i am also uh, under obligation to enable or create certain conditions which will help uh, other people to achieve their be uh, best uh, or uh, the best in their personality so 
so in that sense he says that rights and duties are correlative and 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 therefore they 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 are the functions uh, of each other uh, and uh, he says that my duty to the state above all is my duty to the ideal object that the uh, actual state must seek to serve so uh, moral theory of course uh, uh, if you remember about that theory it it moral theory says that uh, that that state has to uh, 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 has to achieve an objective and that i uh, that object is an ideal object which comes from the moral consciousness of the entire society so that object represents the common object so so he says that my duty if uh, if uh, if i if i am bound by the duty uh, to the state then above all my duty is to that uh, that ideal object for which the state has been constituted so if in any case the state is deviating from its duty to achieve though that object then i have I, it it becomes my duty to resist the state uh, uh, to uh, uh, so that i uh, so that uh, uh, i i can i can fulfill my duty to achieve that common object or ideal object which for which the state has been constituted so i i then also have the right to uh, right to resist the state if it hinders the pursuit of such ideal objects that are recognized by the society so he says further that the rights of individual are subservient to common good and it is the duty of an individual to contribute to the common good and exercise of his rights so uh, we cannot say that uh, uh, i can exercise rights in a way that can harm common good because already we have studied that uh, that uh, concept of individual and public welfare in previous slides so the individual uh, then he says that must learn to subordinate his self interest to the common good so here uh, he must learn that uh, that that my self interest is uh, is 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 not superior uh, to to the common good it is subordinate to it and the privileges of the sum must give way before the rights of the all so here uh, particularly uh, the liberal uh, theory um, uh, uh, he targets that uh, in case of liberal theory uh, 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 one section is uh, uh, is get uh, one section reaches a stage where it is getting all the privileges at the cost of other sections so that is not maintainable so he says that uh, that uh, the, the, the that privilege that uh, those privileges of the sum must must give way before the rights of the all sections of the society or all members or all individuals of the society so here he says that rights are and duties are thus compatible only and if only there uh, there is no division of society into privileged and underprivileged sections because we cannot say that okay uh, this section has 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 the rights only and this section has the has has the has the, has only the duties uh, uh, in um, in its slot so uh, uh, there must be each section in uh, there must be uh, there must be every section uh, which must have some rights and which must have some duties then only it can be the society can be maintainable or the 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 the, the peace can be sustainable so then he talks about social and economic rights as we discussed earlier he is a liberal thinker but then he uh, not just focuses upon political rights but also talks about social and economic rights so social and economic rights he he gives an elaborate blueprint of a just society in which he focuses upon social economic as well as political rights so important rights that have been uh, that are focused by him are right to livelihood humane conditions of work then fair wages and provision of insurance against unemployment are some of the rights that have been enumerated by lasky as essential and also then uh, he also talks uh, about the thing that workers should have a share and voice in industrial management then only um, uh, a kind of uh, um, uh, that exploitation that ta that take pla takes place in liberal order that can be prevented if the workers are given a voice uh, and share in the industrial management because he he knows the tyranny 
enemy of the capitalism he then also advocates the citizens right to education because he believes that if we want to bring equality it comes with education also and also education right, right to education one individual must have right to education because it fits him for the task of citizenship citizenship so so uh, if if uh, if i am to be trained in the tasks of citizenship i must be given education so being a liberal of course uh, he will he will uh, uh, he will also talk about the freedom of speech and expression uh, fr- uh, right to franchise and uh, and then right to criticize uh, the government because because ultimately uh, all these are the cornerstones of the liberal democratic state so uh, uh, the addition that he makes is of social and economic rights so so also then he says that right to freedom of speech and expression and within it the right to criticize the government is is basically the cornerstone of the democracy so L- lasky regards it as the cornerstone of the democracy and uh, and and if if any government is not providing the right to criticize then that government cannot be called demo- uh, democratic government and 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 that uh, the uh, uh, and liberty cannot be considered safe in such a, uh, in such a government and then comes the right to property uh, the main right uh, uh, which is at the heart of liberalism classical liberalism if we talk so right to property was very close to the hearts of uh, initial uh, liberal thinkers uh, uh, the the uh, the, the, the uh, natural liberal individualistic uh, uh, the theorists Uh, who who uh, who uh, who held it uh, right to property as 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 an inalienable right of an uh, of an individual as an inal- inalienable part of his uh, of his uh, labor so they they said that uh, a person acquires property by putting in his labor so that's why he has the right to property but then lasky knows the uh, the 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 uh, the, uh, the tyranny of capitalism and he knows that uh, if if uh, right to property is to be held absolutely sacred then what it mean uh, what it means in in <clears throat> in in terms of law um, in terms of uh, um, in terms of the the sense that if, if we look for the long term then of course he says that uh, at a, uh, when when it, this this uh, if right to property is held sacrosanct and absolute then a time will come that uh, the when 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 the property will be concentrated in the hands of the few and all the all the uh, uh, all the other aspects will be will be controlled by the, the those pro, uh, property owning classes only and then individually in, uh, individual liberty will will not be secure in that case of course in fact that has happened uh, in in the in, in in the initial stages uh, of a democrat, uh, democratic uh, government governments so that's why he says that uh, um, a right to property must be related to fun- uh, to to the function it performs in the common good so uh, common good is basically the good of each individual so if uh, some if right to property is enabling me to to putting some uh, and uh, to putting some value to to the common good then i must have a, a have right to property if right to property is in uh, helping me uh, in 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 realizing my best self then then of course i must have right to property but i must have right to property to that extent only to which it is contributed you know, contributing to common good if in case i uh, i'm given that this right in in an unbridled sense then of course the stage uh, will come and when in which i will be able to decide upon the upon the lives of uh, uh, lives of me, uh, a lot of a lot number of people and 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 then when that situation comes of course i have that uh, this right to property in excess then of course he talks about curtailing the right to property so he says that uh, uh, it must be uh, right to property must be subordinated to the maintenance of common welfare so if i am getting the right uh, uh, right to property to such an extent that i am able to decide uh, the lives of thousands of men and women then of course my uh, my right uh, to property is certainly beyond the limits and i it must be restricted and uh, i must not have it uh, 
it it beyond beyond that limit um, um, beyond the li beyond the limit uh, which is needed for me to satisfy my impulse so that was his view on right to property and uh, this was all about today's discussion uh, that is about harold j lasky's theory of rights so if you like this uh, video then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and uh, do not forget to press the bell icon and if you are interested in following our community you can join us on telegram where more than 34000 students are following us or you can also download our application adu mandla which is available on both the play store and ios so so uh, by by uh, by uh, by joining our community you will be able to get all the updates that that we bring uh, for guiding you people so all the links will be provided in the description box so this is all about today's discussion and do ensure that you subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so thank you have a very nice day ahead